What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're talking summer worm fishing. Everything you need to know to be successful this time of the year, throwing a worm. Summer worm fishing is kind of a staple in my arsenal. You know, um, there's something magical when you're throwing a big 12 and a half, 13, 14 inch worm and you just feel that dunk, you know, that the adrenaline gets going, that heartbeat starts pumping. You don't know if you have a 10 incher or a 10 pounder, uh, but one of the most universal baits, especially this time of the year, is a worm. Now we're not gonna talk about little tiny drop shots or, or little wacky rigs or anything like that. We're gonna go through um, probably five or six key baits. Gonna really try and simplify this for you because there are so many uh, worms on the market, especially bigger worms. You know, when, when I talk about summer worm, and I'm thinking six inch all the way up to like 15 inch. And those of you guys that saw the video I did last year, you know I had that big 24 inch uh, giant worm down uh, in Texas. You know, it's just one of those things, it's like, holy cow, you know, what eats that? And uh, believe it or not, a two pound bass will eat a 10, 12, 14 inch soft plastic. You just have to give them time. So, um, you know, so like I said, super universal. So I wanted to kind of simplify it for you because it can be overwhelming, but it can be a super productive technique this time of the year. So for me, hands down, my number one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys a couple different ways to rig these, but my number one technique uh, this time of the year, if I'm fishing in and around grass and offshore structure, it's gonna be some kind of shaky head. Now I brought some different shaky heads. We're gonna talk about the different baits. I'll link everything down below in the video description, but we're not talking just your average five, six inch shaky head. We have some magnum shaky heads, we got some big worms, but for me, you know, let's talk about when and where and why. You know, as we transition into the summer, we got the sun setting here, so sorry if the uh, the shade lines get real bad or kind of lose some light, but uh, it was a hot one today, so we're doing this a little bit cooler weather. But uh, when, where, and why. So when, right now, all the way through fall, um, I like to throw some kind of big worm um, let's do why next because as these fish come off of their uh, spawn, you know, the, the spawn transition into summer, we've, we've covered it in videos in the past, you know, a lot of these fish are going to go offshore. They're going to go deeper. They're going to get in structure, flooded timber. They're going to get offshore on rock piles. Uh, out here on the TVA, you're talking about ledges, uh, you know, breaks island humps out in the middle, uh, high spots. But you, typically, the offshore stuff is gonna be primarily around rock. Chunk rock, you know, bigger rock, actual rock piles. Those fish are gonna be in and around that rock. And uh, they're gonna be there all the way through fall until they start coming up shallow to chase bait. But um, a big worm is a great way to fish through and around that. So the shaky head, well, we talked about where and why, or when, we talked about why. Where, I kind of explained that. You know, there is a flip and bite, obviously, the fish that say shallow, your frog fish, your flipping fish, your punch fish. Um, you know, those fish, I actually have a bait that we're gonna talk about. I have one shallow bait that I like to, uh, like to throw this time of the year. But primarily, for this video, I'm talking about your deep fish, your offshore fish. Um, so let's talk a shaky head. So today we're gonna be talking about a shaky head, a drop shot, a Texas rig, and a Carolina rig. Those are the four basic warm techniques that I have the most technique, uh, uh, most um, confidence in. Um, but I'm gonna try and simplify it. I'm gonna just give you just a few baits in each category because each category could be its own video and could be overwhelming with the amount of product on the market. But let's talk about the shaky head. The reason I like throwing a shaky head is it is very 
responsive. These fish are coming off the spawn, post-spawn fish. Water's warm, weather's warm, everything's warm. You can get really aggressive with how, how, you, how fast and how aggressive you fish a shaky head. You know, you don't, you're not just sitting there dragging it, right? Hop, hop. This bait is connected to the weight. It's connected. It's not like a, an unpegged Texas rig or Carolina rig. We're going to get to that in just a second. I'll show you that. But this bait is connected right to the head. So it is super responsive and very weedless. So your offshore brush piles, your offshore rock piles, that sort of stuff, let this bait fall. And I like to get real aggressive with it. This is actually a 610 medium rod, a little bit lighter uh, setup. I'm gonna show you some of the heavier setups in just a second. I'll link everything down below in the video description because I'm gonna cover a lot of stuff really quickly as far as, as um, gear and everything. But uh, a shaky head, again, you can get right in that brush pile. You can get right in that rock pile. And you have a ton of feel because your line is tied right to that weight. You got a lot of action, a lot of response. When I hop this rod, you know, the weight's not sliding up and down. This bait is hopping up off the bottom and falling. Hands down, my favorite shaky head in this size is going to be the T-back. guy right here very 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 good shaky head worm it works good on a Nico rig or drop shot but for me this is my number one go-to shaky head so now that we've talked about when where and why let's talk about some of the cool baits for shaky heads um, straight tail worms Okay, um, trying not to go too on too many tangents. Uh, we talked about the techniques. I'm gonna go through all the different techniques, but let's talk about worms first. Cause in the intro, I showed you guys two different worms. You have your straight tail worms and your ribbon or, or curly tail worms. See the difference? Straight tail, a little bit of bulbous tail, a lot of action down there on the bottom. This is gonna sit there and just shimmy in the current or shimmy as you're dragging it. So, to keep it simple, I have my straight tail worms, my ribbon tail worms. These are gonna be my aggressive fished worms, and these are gonna be my dragging worms, my Carolina rig, my Texas rig. This has, has very subtle movement. Yeah, you can hop it up, but this ribbon tail is just gonna dance down, kinda swim down, but where these baits work better than the straight tail is when you're just dragging, okay? so. Now that we're talking about shaky heads, look at this guy right here. That is a magnum shaky head. That is a 10 inch Strike King bullworm. Those of you guys that don't want to throw that big of a bait, you know, <laughs> big worm fishing can be addicting. Like I said, when you get bit on a 12 inch, 14, 15 inch worm, you don't know if that bass is going to be two pounds or 10 pounds. There's the eight inch right there I'll show you guys a comparison so just like us big swim bait guys we're typically throwing bigger baits just to minimize uh, the smaller bites uh, when we're fishing offshore schools but you don't have to you know I will link some smaller that, that's that eight that's an eight inch bullworm that is a very good uh, larger profile shaky head worm and then here you go that is that 10 inch let me show you I don't know if I I showed you the size comparison. But a shaky head, there it is. Eight inch, 10 inch, okay? Straight tail worm, but the shaky head is so um, responsive, right? You're connected directly to the, the head, the weight of the bait. You get that thing popping up, crashing down, and nine times out of 10, that's when I get bit on my shaky heads, when, when they're kind of falling back down to the bottom. Another great straight tail worm. So we talked about the T-Mac. That is your normal, I wouldn't go smaller than that in the summertime. But this guy right here, Magnum Bates Worms are, so I got two different sizes for you. I believe that's a seven inch, maybe seven and a half, and then a, a bigger one. I actually have this one rigged up on uh, kind of a swing head jig setup. 
But again, big worms, you're power fishing, you're fishing around rock, flooded timber, brush piles, that sort of stuff. You need to be able to get these fish out. But straight tail worms, I'm going with the T-Mac, the bull worm, and then the worms are one of the two sizes in any of them, either the smaller or the larger. Typically for me, I will start with the bigger just because I, I'm fishing for bigger fish and I want to minimize those smaller uh, class fish, those bites. But um, while I'm thinking about it, so I don't skip it, as far as colors, hands down this time of the year, all the way through fall, you cannot beat, at least in my experience, you cannot beat June bug or some kind of version of it. Um, I really like Kentucky Special. It's a, let me show you June Bug real quick. Those of you guys that don't know what June Bug is, it's kind of purple, it's kind of some emerald flake. Almost all companies make the color June Bug. It's just one of the most common, it's like green pumpkin, black flake, everybody makes it. But uh, one I also like is um, Kentucky Special in that net bait. Just a, kind of a different version of it green pumpkin kind of mixed in with June bug. But June bug, green pumpkin black flake, um, some kind of purple, you know, like a margarita mutilator or some kind, of, this one's actually called Delta, Delta dark purple, but they're all very similar. I'm going with some kind of purple, some kind of green pumpkin, and some kind of June bug. That's it, I'm keeping it really, really simple. Um, so, Back to the straight tail worms. Net bait, that T, uh, that, uh, that T Mac, the Wormser, and the Strike King, the, uh, the Bull Worm. Again, really, really impressed with all those. Caught a ton of fish in all these. I've really simplified my own fishing. Uh, so when I, last year, Matt and I took a road trip. We went down to Falcon, caught a ton of big fish. Uh, fishing a shaky head, fishing a Texas rig, a Carolina rig. But just summer worm fishing, you know, every angler is a little bit different. They all have those different techniques they like to throw. And for me, 100% of the time, I would love throwing a big worm versus a big jig. Uh, you know, some guys just tell me I'm crazy, but it's just, it's just the, I guess, the overall profile of the bait in the water. Um, it's just so much fun. And like I said, you get that, you get that tick and you don't know if it's a, a, a giant or, you know, a two pounder. But um, so, shaky head, real quickly. I feel like this is missed out a lot in the summer. Now, I'm not gonna try and make this video an hour long, try and simplify it for you, but we're already like 13 or 14 minutes in. Um, a bait that is super often overlooked, at least in my experience, is gonna be the drop shot. You know, a bait, those of you guys that aren't familiar, you have the weight on the bottom, your bait suspended up off the bottom, uh, and it can be it can be rigged several different ways, but I'm not talking about a little four inch drop shot shad imitator uh, on light line. I'm talking about power shotting. So I'm throwing braid to leader. This is actually 15 pound leader. I have a special hook. It's that owner cover shot HD. It's a, like, a, like a 2X hook, but I can throw this just like that shaky head. I can throw this in the brush pile. I can throw this on the rock pile, but it's a different presentation. That bait's suspended up off bottom. I can get real aggressive with it without moving the bait too, uh, too much. Does that make sense? It's so like a shaky head, you're hopping it up, it's coming to you. The, 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 uh, the drop shot, I can sit there and just shake it. Just really shake that, that, uh, that rod tip, get that bait dancing around. But I can fish more aggressively, but slower. And honestly, this is my go-to shallow bait. If I'm fishing anywhere around grass, you know, I could flip this thing out. I'm throwing on a bait caster. I could flip this thing out on grass lines. I could fish it through all the other stuff. Uh, if you're fishing in and around docks, you know, you can get real accurate with your flips, your pitches. But if you're around isolated grass patches and you want to uh, throw a worm, don't be a sleeper on the power shot. I'm gonna call this a power shot because again, it's braid to leader, big heavy hook, uh, half ounce, three eighths, half ounce weight. 
you know, you're getting really heavy with a drop shot. So I'm calling it a power shot. Um, you can go with, a, this is actually a 610 medium. And while I'm holding this rod, if you guys haven't already, um, the X Pride A's, there is a ton back in the United States available. Uh, you can get them right now. You guys know but we've been raving about these rods, the 610 medium, the 73 extra heavy, the 711 uh, extra heavy. Been raving about these, about these rods for a long, long time. You know, the new X Prides are amazing. Very special rod, but you can't get them. They're all back ordered, but these are available right now. Um, I can't, I'm, I'm still fishing this one today. Um, but uh, these are available. The X Pride A's are back in stock throughout the country. So uh, if you can, I would grab some while you can. But I like throwing this on like a 610 medium, medium heavy, seven foot medium heavy. Again, you're gonna jack that fish out of that grass, out of whatever brush pile it is in, uh, but you need to get them out. And that's why I like throwing it on the bait caster. But for the most part, when you see guys talking about summer worm and they're, they're talking about big Carolina rigs, big Texas rigs, uh, big shaky heads, but I hardly ever see guys talking about the big drop shot. Now I'm not talking about a giant worm. Now you can, but for me, it's typically a six or a seven inch uh, robo worm. You guys know that we love the six inch straight tail, the fat, I'll show you the difference real quick and we'll move on. But this is the six versus the seven. Uh, if you want a little bit bigger profile, there's the six versus the seven. So on that rod right here, I actually have that, that seven inch drop shot worm rigged up. So don't forget about throwing a drop shot, especially this time of the year. Even you shallow guys, guys that are staying shallow, they're fishing around grass, they're fishing around dock pilings, they're fishing around whatever cover don't forget about the drop shot okay so we talked about the straight tail worms now let's talk about the big ribbon tails now typically the two techniques that i like to use to throw a big ribbon tail that's a 15 inch worm right there green pumpkin Real quickly, those of you guys that aren't familiar with a Carolina rig, you have a leader right here. Sorry, I gotta scratch an inch on my nose. Right here, I have braid. That's actually, I run a bobber stop to a tungsten Carolina rig weight to another bobber stop. I got one right there so that this thing can slide back and forth. It's gonna give me a little bit of play. So the benefit of having that play in the Carolina rig versus a shaky head or a pegged Texas rig, I'll show you that in just a second. When you throw, the, I mean, this is a three quarter ounce bait. Typically I'm throwing this around current. I'm throwing it offshore, deep water. That weight's gonna fall down first, right? Now behind it, typically you have a 18 inch to four or five foot leader to your worm. So your weight's down on bottom. This worm is slowly coming down. It doesn't have that, um, that three quarter, half ounce, three quarter uh, weight feel to it. So when a fish picks it up, all it's, all it's feeling is the actual worm and the hook. This bait's gonna slide a little bit. Once that weight hits the, uh, the bobber stop, that's when that fish is gonna feel the resistance. By then, hopefully you feel that resistance as well and you can set the hook. But the benefit of throwing a Carolina rig is it's kind of free floating down there. So you can be dragging that weight. Uh, with a Carolina rig, you typically want a little bit longer rod because as you guys can see, you can only reel up the weight that close to the rod tip. You're gonna have about, depending on your leader length, anywhere from 18 inches to four or five feet of line out. You need a long rod to be able to cast that. So typically I like a seven foot I'm not going shorter than seven foot four, but typically seven foot six, seven foot eight, something like that. But the benefit with the Carolina rig, I have a ton of sensitivity with that, with that tungsten Carolina rig weight down there. I'm just dragging this. I'm feeling bottom, tunk, 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 tunk. But the worm itself, kind of like the drop shot, it's up off the bottom a little bit. You know, with that ribbon tail, it's just down there, just moving just a little bit. Um, 
and doesn't really overwhelm those fish. You know, with a shaky head, I'm getting real uh, aggressive, hopping it and stuff. This big Carolina rig, big Texas rigs, I'm just dragging. Slowly dragging, picking each piece of cover apart. I'm feeling that that down there. Dunk, 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 dunk. You know, you start coming into that chunk rock, let it sit just a little bit. Now the key with all of these big worms, drop shot, shaky head, big Texas rig, Carolina rig, you feel that dunk. You're gonna reel down just a little bit. I'm gonna check for resistance. Then I'm gonna reel down and set. I want to give these fish time to get that bait in their mouth. You know, they could just be biting on the tail. You know, if you feel that little bit of resistance, they could be swimming with it. So you wanna give them time to get that bait fully in their mouth before you reel down and jack them. But a Carolina rig, again, each of these techniques could have their own in-depth video. But I like running a bobber stop to the weight, to another bobber stop, to a swivel, and then I'm gonna have anywhere from 17 to 20, 22 pound uh, liter on my big Carolina rig worm. Um, again, that is that 15 inch, I'll show you that guy real quick. That is the actual C-Mac. You guys know that I like the T-Mac. This is the C-Mac. Pull this guy out here for you. Undo the tail. There's just a lot of movement there, a lot of bait for those fish to get. Again, the head's only about, I call that maybe four inches, but there's a lot of ribbon tail back there. But it also comes in the 11 inch. So I have two worms I'm gonna recommend for a ribbon tail. Actually three, I don't have the third one with me. But that's the 15 inch, that's the 11 inch, and that is the C-Mac. Again, June bug, green pumpkin, black flake, same colors. The other one, those of you guys have been watching the channel for a long time, talk about the Zoom Old Monster and the Mag Old Monster. 12 inch bait and a uh, little bit smaller bait. But this, for the longest time, was my favorite ribbon tail worm. So there's the Old Monster, the Mag versus the Old Monster quite a bit bigger. Let me show you that 15 inch C-Mac. Now the reason I got these two for you, you see that 15 is a lot longer, a lot more tail action, but I wanted you guys to see the size of the body. That C-Mac is nothing special as far as, as cumber. It's, it's not an overwhelmingly large worm where that mag old monster, there's a lot of bait there. So you can use, if you're fishing around big fish, you can, uh, fish a, a 2x like a jungle hook something that's a little bit more stout got a lot more rubber to get through but that bait right there you can see has a lot longer head section but both of these baits different actions in the water that's why i have these two um, but just a ton of fish catches on both of these and um, those are my two by far if you need to nail it down to two baits two ribbon tail worms the c-mac and the old monster those are winners now, last but not least, make sure I'm talking about these worms. Got worms laying all over the place. Let's talk about Texas rig. Because that, that probably is the most common out of all worm fishing. Right, Texas rig, you have your weight. Let me set this down so you guys can see. You have your weight. Bobber stop, that's totally up to you. If you want to peg or unpeg. The benefit of pegging, you make it a lot like the shaky head where that weight is connected to the head of the worm, a lot more reactive, a lot more um, sensitivity uh, when you're fishing around rock. Um, you can not peg where that, that weight is free floating. Now it's kind of like that Carolina rig. Uh, the weight falls first, that worm falls slowly down and the fish, when it's uh, when they're being finicky or they're just picking up the bait, they don't feel that weight resistance uh, until you reel down and pull back on them. Now, I like to run a bobber stop, but I will give the bait 
say four or five inches of play. So now I get kind of the best of both worlds. Um, again, Texas rigged, it's weedless. All these, all these techniques are. This is actually the 11 inch T-Mac rigged up. Seven foot 11, this is that Bass X. Seven foot 11, 11 heavy. Fire this out there. Now again, with that sliding Texas rigged weight, that, that sinker, I can lift up and I'm not feeling anything and then boom, that, that weight gets to, the, to that bobber stop and then it's reactive, right? So I have a little bit of play. So just like the shaky head, actually not like the shaky, shaky head, just like the Carolina rig, this for me, Texas rigging a big worm I'm using the dragging technique. I'm using a ribbon tail worm, lots of secondary action with that worm down there. Even when I'm not using that rod tip, when it's just down there in the, the water's moving around, that tail down there is just rocking back and forth. Uh, I am fishing a ribbon tail or a curly tail worm. Now, Texas rigging, if I'm flipping or punching or whatever, completely different story, but uh, we're talking about big worms, summer worm fishing. So again, I'm fishing this a lot like the Carolina rig. Again, seven foot 11 rod, seven six to eight foot rods. When you're throwing the big worms, power on power. Um, it's just so much fun when you jack them. Again, braid the leader. I'm throwing anywhere from, well, on the, on the drop shot, 30 pound braid to 10, 12, 14, 16 pound leader. I'll link all this stuff down below in the video description, but uh, for the most part, braid to leader, uh, either 30, 40, 50, 65 pound braid to uh, a different size leader, depending on what I'm fishing around. If I'm fishing around rock, I'm going with 17 to 20, maybe even 22, 25. Um, just totally depends on what you're fishing around, but somewhere in there with the bigger, bigger heavier worms and, uh, and all that good stuff. But the Texas rig, I typically do not throw a straight tail Texas rig. Again, I want that ribbon tail, I want that worm moving, when, even when I'm dragging, I want that thing just kicking down there, just flopping around, moving around. If I do have to hop it out of the rocks, it's gonna kinda swim up and swim down. But, uh, so much fun, especially with today's electronics and you can really dial in your cast on the brush pile, on the rock point, on the chunk rock, on that standing timber. You line up your cast, you get that big worm down there, you're dragging it through and you feel the dunk. You reel down and you set and that rod loads up and you're just, there's so much fun. It's almost, to me, it's like throwing a big swim bait and getting bit. You just never know what's on the other end of the line. But uh, guys, summer worm fishing. Again, two different categories, straight tail, ribbon tail, one reactive, one kind of slow dragging, but they both get bit. You're gonna have to figure out what your fish like on the different days, because it totally changes. One day you'll be catching them on a shaky head in June bug color, the next day you're catching them on a 15 inch Carolina rig in green pumpkin black flake. It totally depends on the fish and where you're fishing, but don't be afraid to adjust. And remember, don't forget about the power shot. There is something to be said about presenting a bait that others aren't doing or not nearly as often. You know, everybody's heard of a Carolina rig. Everybody's heard of a Texas rig, big Texas rig. Um, throw this in the same locations that you'll be throwing. I mean, you can throw a big 10, 12 inch worm on a, on a power shot, if you will. Uh, if you want, I've done it, caught big fish, caught big catfish doing it. Um, the other ribbon tail worm that I didn't bring, I don't wanna, don't wanna forget about talking about is gonna be the power worm. That is my go-to nighttime. It has that, obviously the power bait in it, has a little bit of smell to it, although these baits reek, they smell really bad too. Uh, but that power worm is another great bait uh, that has a ton of action. But guys, there it is, the simplified down, hopefully that was an easy understanding of summer worm fishing. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. 
go out, have one or two worm rods, have one with a ribbon tail, one with a straight tail. The size t totally depends on you and what you're comfortable with, uh, the gear you have, what you can get away with. Um, I would say for me, if I had to rank all of them, if I'm fishing shallow, the drop shot. That's what I'm starting off with. Flip, 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 flipping around the grass lines, uh, fishing around the standing timber, the rock piles. Um, if I'm moving sh deeper and I'm going offshore into the rock, into that sort of stuff, uh, for me, it's going to be the big shaky head. Again, I like like to react, reaction fish, so I'm going to hop that thing up, uh, and then I will transition to the Texas rig and eventually the Carolina rig if I need to slow down. So for me, that is kind of my... Um, my kind of my one, two, three gonna be the shaky head, then the Texas rig, then the Carolina rig. But don't be afraid to throw the Carolina rig. Some of my best days out on the water, just been dragging super windy offshore, dragging, filling that bait, going dunk, 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 and then dunk. And you reel down and oh, the fight is on. Eight, nine, 10 pounders, so much fun. Um, anyways. Hopefully this gives you guys some confidence. Hopefully this simplifies it for you. Down below in the video description, I'll link uh, my favorite worms for each technique. Kind of cover those fairly quickly. And then keep it simple on the colors. I'll link some of those as well. And then the gear, you know, the hooks, they take specific hooks. You know, some of these worms, as big as they are, take, you know, seven, 11 aught hooks. You know, something that's kind of long and slender. Uh, you need some specialty hooks. So we'll, we'll link all that stuff down below. Our favorite rods line all that stuff but if you guys have any questions please leave those down below in the comments section i will try to get to those as soon as possible but uh, summertime summer worming you know you guys like i said I, I can't emphasize it enough when you can get on an offshore bite and you have that cast dialed and you have where those fish are loaded up um and you're bringing that big worm through or you're hopping that worm through and it just and you reel down and you set and it just locks up and it's just like whoa whoa uh, it is special and you guys will be hooked. You know, for me, it's weird because as an angler, you know, there's so many different techniques, right? And I don't, I feel like I go through phases like today and I really want to catch them on a frog tomorrow. I want to catch them on a buzz bait or I want to catch them on a shaky head or I want to catch them on a chatter bait. Um, but when I get in that phase and I, I'm throwing a worm offshore and I'm just dragging, um, hopping through that heavy cover structure. Man, it is hard to beat a big 10, 12, 14, 15 inch worm uh, because like I said, those bites are so addicting. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next video.